That's the one. Coffee, please. Okay. Oh, sorry, dear. All right. Two more coffees. Okay. Is, uh, is that a late edition? Hmm? The paper. Oh, I don't know. Never mind. Tracing a job. Yes. Oh, there's uh, plenty going by the look of it. Not the sort I want. Go on. What you after? Something different, I suppose. Two cappuccino. Oh. Here. Why don't you come and sit down? Uh, no, thank you. Come on, come meet the boyfriend. Come All right. on. I'm Gracie. This is Henry. How do you do? Very nice to meet you. My name is Marisa. Unusual. It's a nice change. <laughs> She's uh, looking for a job. Oh. Well, I'm sure you'll have no difficulty. I've only been in London a week. Oh, uh, on your own, are you? Maybe we can help. Yes, we might. We might indeed. Henry's got lots of contacts. In the, uh, the entertainment world, you know. It's very kind of you. Well, have you ever considered working in a club? You mean as a waitress? Oh, heavens, no. Not that sort of club. Something quite superior. Uh, what would I do? Well, you'd be a hostess, you know. Talk with the patrons, dance with them. Top people. Financiers, film stars, high society. Oh, the lot. But Henry Morris is not used to that sort of thing. Staying up dancing half the night, drinking champagne with people. You don't want that, do you, dear? I, I don't know. If it were a nice club. Well, now you offend me. There's no higher class than the one I've in mind. It's the Golden Bucket. It's just behind Piccadilly Circus. What do you want? I was told to come here. Come in. You must be Marissa Cooper. Henry told me about you. My name's Doris Newman. It's not very big, as you can see. But we managed to have fun. Henry said you've never done anything like this before. No, I've only been in London a week. Well, don't worry. It's not difficult. How old are you, by the way? 21. Let's see your dress. That won't do. We'd better see what there is in the wardrobe. Uh, 
I don't know why I do that. It kills me. Hey, fetch a Geiger counter. I think he's dead. Come on, Albert. Time to get back to Dragon. Now then, Albert, no more to me. We'll do it at King's Cross in 20 minutes. Excuse me, love. Come on, Albert. Waiter! You can't blame him, you know. Greek's his refuge. Marissa, it's been a real pleasure. Here. Buy yourself a new girdle. That last dance must have taken all the zing out of the one you're wearing. <laughs> Insult me. Do you think I drank or something? Ah, oh, come on. Just one little drinky. What's wrong with one little drinky? Waiter? Hey, waiter. Mm. Give me a large scotch. What do you see? My name was again? Uh, Marisa. Well, uh, Marisa, what you gonna have? Anything at all. Anything at all. A gin and tonic, please. Uh, uh, lovely bit of stuff. I got friends to you. Come on, baby. Oh. You all right? Who do you think you're pushing him up? Well, as much right as that as you have. Get out. Oh. Which one is it? The brown one. You know, this place is the end of the line, not the beginning. My name's Tony Gordon. Thank you for... For him? What is it? Something happened? This young lady's leaving. She doesn't like your customers. Neither do I. Go on, get your clothes. Go on. Well, uh, we were down about 70 feet and we saw these two wrecks. Old Roman ships. Sunk maybe oh, 2,000 years ago. Where was all this? Oh, off a little place near Khan. Well, I imagine you know it. I have not been there, but I love the sea. My father was a sealer. Really? In the Merchant Navy. He was killed in the war. Well, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. My uh, brother and I, we keep a yacht down there most of the year. I try to spend a few months each summer on her. It must be beautiful. Yes, it is. Would you like some brandy? Well... Sure you would. Waiter? Sir. Some brandy. Tell Lewis it's for Mr. Gordon. Very good. Well, this is it. Do you go to that club often, Tony? Soft air. You're a very pretty girl, Marissa. Excuse me. 
Okay, Henry, you understand? Good. Now, we ain't got this street covered at all. Why is that? Ah, oh, Tony. Oh, Tony. How is it out there? Uh, nothing special. I hear you found a new mystery. No, Henry did. Any good? Hmm. She will be. How old? Yeah, old enough. You better be careful, Tony. Some of these women cops can spot a juvenile a mile off. Mm. How's Susan doing? Oh, uh, okay. Hmm? Oh, I warn you, Tony boy. You rushed her. You know, sometimes you gotta actually spin it out a little. These girls, they ain't all tramps. Some of them have had religious training. It takes time for them to shake it off. Yeah, well, don't worry. I can handle Susan. Sure, sure, I know, but actually, it's uh, better not to take any chances. Only once one of these girls to start talking could ruin the business. Take it easy, Tony. What's the matter? There's a guy down there with Susan. So? He just doesn't look the type. How long have you been in there? Ten minutes. Yeah, who's that guy you were talking to? Nobody. What have you been doing? It's my business. I haven't spent a night with me all week. Oh, really? Well, uh, I've been busy. You can't treat me like this, Tony. You said if I did what you wanted. You've got a new girl. If you have, I'll... You'll do what? I'll see you later. Maybe. What's your name? Betty. All right, Betty. You any objection if we talk? <laughs> well, I don't make an eye change. What do we talk about? Cigarettes? No, thanks. You mainly. What are you, Ducky? Police? No, just a writer. Oh! <laughs> what are you going to put me in? A thriller? This is fact, not fiction. Oh! Like one of those documentaries on the telly? Yeah, something like that, but this might help you. How help me? Well, you and your friends get the law changed. What, you mean licenses? Well, it'd be better than appearing in court once a month and paying a fine, wouldn't it? Could be. And of course, that wouldn't suit Angelo. Eh? Hey? Angelo Gianni. Who's he? It's all right, I know all about him. And his brother, Tony. The Gianni brothers. It sounds like a music hall act, doesn't it? Does it? Look, Ducky, we're having a nice chat. Don't spoil it, eh? Oh, there's just... Tell me, how long have you been in the game, professionally? Three years, something like that. How long have you been with the Giannis? That's one question too many. I'll pay for the answer. If I gave it to you, we'd both pay for it. Now, turn it up and let's have a drink. Come in. Ah, oh, you know Sergeant Franks, don't you, Mr. Buxton? Morning, Sergeant. Morning, sir. How's the book coming along? Oh, I've got a typewriter and plenty of clean fools here. Mr. Buxton isn't getting all the cooperation he'd hoped for. I've talked to a number of the girls, but I didn't get anything of any value, at least nothing the Social Research Council don't know already. Well, as I said last week, we can give you facts, but obviously you want more than that. Yes, I want to find out what's behind the facts. Look, there must be, there must be some way of stopping this. There ought to be, if you can catch the girls soon enough. Yeah, that's true. But to do that, you've got to find out where they come from, how they got hold of, who gets hold of them. Ah, you're on dangerous ground there, Mr. Buxton. Yes, maybe. 
But obviously, I'm not going to get what the council wants by standing on the sidelines. Well, if you really insist on exploring the jungle, you better know what sort of reptiles you'll find there. Maybe that's true. I could get those girls to talk, I'm sure of it. If only I could convince them that I knew it all already. I doubt it's been tried, sir. It doesn't work. They're too darn scared. Yes, perhaps. Remember, you're the police. Well, you better tell me about these reptiles, Inspector. This is the Gianni file. A description of their activities since they arrived in this country. Would you like to go to Brighton tomorrow? You're going to teach me to swim as well? Well, I have a flat down there just eating up his rent for nothing. You never told me about it. Do you expect my life history in four days? Tony, you wouldn't let me down, would you? <laughs> what do you think I am, some kind of a monster? I love you. I want to be with you always, all the time. But I never saw it like this. Not this way. Yeah, well, I know. It's not for long. As soon as the divorce comes through. You have seen the lawyers, haven't you? Sure I have. They're getting right on with it. Darling, you won't change your mind. Go back to her. No, I told you before. It's through. It never was like this anyway. I know. I know, but I get for it. If my mother found out, well, she wouldn't understand. She'd make me go back. Oh, don't turn me down now, Marissa. Finding you is the most wonderful thing that's ever happened to me. Mm. Don't leave me now, please. Hold me. Hold me tight. Well, you will go to Brighton then. Uh, good, we can spend two or three days. Or a week, maybe. Just be... Don't say anything. <laughs> Darling. You're late. <laughs> you didn't ready for an hour. It sounded as though we're already married. I'm frozen. It was cold in the train? Very. Perhaps we can leave in London soon. Then you won't have to travel so much. Yeah. How was business today? Okay. Darling, what is your business? I've told you I'm an agent. You mean you buy and sell things? Yeah, that's right. I'm a Boy Scout, didn't you know? You've come a long way from that frightened little girl I saw in the Golden Bucket, haven't you? Thanks to you. Well, how about getting Papa a drink, huh? What about a dinner, Tony? Can wait five minutes. 
Who's the letter from? My mother. The hostel sent it on. Tony, she's anxious about me. I... I wish I could tell her about us. Oh, yeah, but, uh, what about the drinks? Tony, did you see the lawyers today? You've been asking that question for a month now. I've told you these things take time. I can't stand nagging. I'm sorry, Tony. I didn't mean to nag. What are you worrying about? Don't I give you everything a girl could want? A nice flat, clothes, furs, jewelry? What more do you want? It's not these things I want, Tony. They're not important to me. But you are. I love you. I want to belong to you. To be married to you. <laughs> Don't I come back nearly every night? <laughs> you know, I can't be here all the time. I have my work to do. I know, darling. All right, so we'll get married then. But first I have to take care of the business. You mean you're not doing so well? Well, I have my troubles, the same as you have. Darling, what is it? Honey, I don't know if you'll understand, but in business you have to take chances. Well, sometimes things don't work out and well, you lose the lot. Like gambling? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. If I win, it's a flat in Park Lane. Mink coats, diamonds, the lot. If I lose... If you lose, then I get a job. I don't mind what happens, so long as we are together. You know, darling, sometimes I feel we really are married. Yeah, well, uh, how about getting your husband some dinner, then? They found him wandering down by the river at 2 o'clock in the morning, bruised all over. Didn't ought to have kids if that's how she looks after him. Well, my sister won't let hers out the house after dark. No more she should. Wandering about the streets all hours of the night. Wicked, I call it. Uh-uh. Oh. So what do you think you're doing here? Come on, come on. All right, boy, all right. See you later, Joe. OK, Millie. Egg and chips. Two eggs? Mm. Come on, Millie. What do you mean, come on, Millie? You had me last week. And we're having you again this week. Cool. Oh, well, do with an early night. Let's go. Mr. Salvin, nice to see you. Anything I can do? Hey, Angela, I want to see him. Yes, certainly, Mr. Angelo. Oh, for Pete's sakes, I'm just hitting the hay. We got trouble. You alone? Well, not exactly. The girl there? Yeah. I'll get rid of her. Look, get me a drink, will you? Oh, go on, don't argue. Yeah, yeah, what's your trouble? Salvi was here tonight. He says he's moving in on us. We gotta talk, Tony. I want you to come right back up here. There's no need to talk. If Salvi moves in on us, talking won't do any good. Hey, 
This is my department, Angelo. I'll handle Salvi. Oh, sure. You handle Salvi, someone else handles you. Pretty soon, the streets are full of cops and we got no business coming in. Yeah, well, that's easy to say from where you sit in the cafe all night. But out in the street... Now, listen, Tony. This is business. It's not actually a game of cowboys and Indians. Now, we got to talk, we got to find a way out of this, and no violence, you understand? Now, you come right back up here. I want you here. You don't want me to hear there is no need. Some business came up. I have to go back. To London? Tonight? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll phone you Tony. tomorrow. Tony, please don't leave me alone. Not tonight, please, will you? And about time. You walked here from Brighton or something? Well, I, uh, <laughs> I had to smooth the girl down. Big boy, my brother. Goes with women and everything. The next thing you know, he'll actually be smoking. Four weeks you've been down there with her. She ain't ready yet. You're the one that wanted a precision job, remember? Now she wants to get married. What's she want that for? She's British already, ain't she? Shut up, Benny. Don't interrupt. Lofty, you get her down here tomorrow. She can go in with Trixie for a start. Actually, give that old bag a chance to earn her keep for a change. Okay, Tony. Oh, yeah, I guess so. I, I started the breakdown tonight. Now she's all ready to go to work to save the happy home. Say, what's all this about Salvi? Oh, yeah, he was here tonight. He says the race game ain't paying off. He reckons he can do business around here. Oh, really? No, Tony, no. <laughs> what else did he say, Angelo? Mm -hmm. Good as new. I'd love a drink, but uh, I'm afraid I can't stay. You've ruined my day. Come on, dear. I've been expecting you for hours. The bedroom's this way. Will you smoke this kind of poison? No, thank you. Lucky for you. I'll spit the weight to about 60 a day. Oh, well. I suppose I better introduce myself, eh? My name's Trixie. I'm your maid. Like the radio on? Isn't Tony here? Oh, he'll be along presently, I expect. Have you known him long? Mm. About six weeks. Mm. Well, Tony's all right. <clears throat> so long as you watch him. Do you know where he wanted me in London? It was so sudden. Well, I expect he'll tell you that himself. What does that Lofty do? Does he work for Tony? Well, no, not really. For Angelo. That's Tony's brother. He's the boss. I don't like him. Oh, Lofty's all right. What did he do? Make a pass? Oh, no. No, nothing like that. He... he was... he kept talking and sneering about things. About Tony's business. What did he mean? What is Donny's business? Well, uh, grass don't come any greener, does it? Trixie, why did Tony want it to see? Shh. Here he is now. She's in the bedroom. I'll be in the kitchen if you want me. Tony. I was worried. No, no, everything will be all right. But the Lofty and Trixie, they scared me. Something happened? Is it your business? Don't worry. Let me get you a drink. 
Lofty's a fool. I told him to tell you not to worry. I got tied up with the lawyers all day. The lawyers? You mean your divorce? No. No, the, uh, the business. Remember last night I told you I was playing for big stakes? Well, I lost out. Yesterday I was okay, and today I might have been rich, but instead, I'm broke. You mean you've lost everything? Everything. I did it for you. I wanted you to have the best. So you gambled all you had? More than that. When you do big business, you don't gamble just your own money. You mean you borrowed money? And you lost that too? Now he wants it back. How much is it? Five thousand in two weeks. Five thousand? But Tony, where will you get this money? I don't know. I can sell the place in Brighton. The clothes, the jewelry. I'm sorry, honey. Would that be enough? No. Two thousand. Three, maybe. And if you haven't got it? I go to jail. No, Tim. Can I help you? Of course I can. I can work. I can go back to that club. I knew you wouldn't let me down. I'm a lucky fellow. You know, I bet there are plenty of men who would give a lot to be here like this with you. You know that? A lot to be here like this with you. What did you say, darling? I just thought of something. There's a guy with a lot of money. His name is Rico Marx. Well, he could loan me a couple of thousand and not even feel it. And the trouble is, Rico's lonely. He's as rich as they come, but lonely. He lost his wife in a plane crash. And now he goes around all tied up inside, hanging on to the only thing he's got left, his money. All he needs is a pretty girl to make a fuss over him. You know, make him feel like he has something to live for. Hey, now, look, don't get me wrong, please. But go to dinner with him. Dance with him. You know, make him laugh and feel happy. Well, then bring him back here for a Just drink. Just a minute. Where will you be? I'll be here. Oh, now, look, this is all up and above board. You tell Rico right off about us. Oh, he won't mind, just as long as he's having fun. Let's see. Yeah, we'll give him a few drinks and, well, he'll be more than happy to loan me the money. Are you sure, Tony? Sure, I'm sure. You know how long I would have been in jail? Three, maybe five years. All because I love you so much that you're kind of cute. How about you tell me how much you love me, huh? I love you. I, I didn't hear it. I love you. Mm, that's fair. She asked me to come in. Tony would be very glad to see you. Well, that's fine. I want to tell you what a great evening I've had. Tony? Tony not in? He said he would be. Tony! Trixie! How much is it Tony wants me to lend him? Two thousand? You can't blame me for wanting a little interest on my money in advance. No. Be nice to me, honey. And he'll have that money tomorrow morning. You want him to have it, don't you? If Tony knew about this, he'd... Tony won't know. Not from me, and. No. I can't. I'm sorry. 
Okay. If that's how you feel. Will you lend him the money? Maybe I will, and maybe I won't. But he must have it. He'll go to prison. Too bad. Drink for you? Yes. Did you have a good sleep? Yes. Thank you. What time is it? Half past eleven. Trixie. Oh. You were out last night. Yes, why? Did you want me? No, it, it's just... Tony. Tony, did you see him? Mm -hmm. Tony, what is it? Didn't, didn't he give you the money? But Tony, Tony, he promised. And he said he could only spare 500. Tony, last night. Look, whatever he said last night, he's not saying this morning. I can't do that. It. It's OK, baby. You did the best you could. What are you going to do now? I don't know. Say, did uh, Rico behave himself last night? You know, you know, I'm sorry I didn't get back, but I got tied up. Did uh, Rico behave himself? Well, yeah, I'm sure he did. <laughs> anyway, you know how to take care of yourself, don't you? <laughs> you know, you've got a knack of making a guy fall for you. I should know that, huh? What are you trying to say? Well... Well, it's just that you got such a way with you, and I had another chance to... You mean... There is another man? Well, yeah, we play our cards right. Oh, no, Tony. No, I can't. <laughs> so Rico Marx takes her out, Jean Connor takes her out. What are you trying to do, actually? You're training her to be a society hostess? I know what I'm doing. Yeah, maybe, but you don't do it fast enough. Shut up, Benny. Now, look, Tony. I want you to get her working. I'm fast. I don't want to have to tell you again. You understand? Yeah. Well, go on. Have you fixed Salvia yet? Actually, you'll let me worry about Salvia. I take care of my business. You take care of yours. Go on. She goes out tomorrow night at 8. Just make sure she's ready. And keep your mouth shut about the other girls. It's wonderful what a dame will do for love, isn't it, Trixie? Yeah. The old Gianni touch, eh? Never fails, does it?
Johnny. Now, now, don't spoil the makeup. You know, no one expects you to like this. Just like we said, it's for us. A little while, then I'll let the world go bury itself. You're not gonna let me down, are you? I can count on you. Let's get it over. You'll need this to let yourself in with again. Everything clear? I'll be around to see that nothing happens to you. And remember, it's for us. The other girls. Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, well, get them out, huh? Yes. Yes. Frostbite if you stand there, you know. This is your first time out. Oh. Well, one more hour for me and then home on a hot water bottle. Mm. I think I'll nip in for a drink. Do you want to come? All right. Well, don't stand there as if you're in the army. Pretend you're enjoying yourself. Walk about, smile. It's long, dear. I don't think it's police. You know, I saw him in the cafe about a month ago, talking to Susan. Yes, he's been in quite a few towns. Next time you see him, you tell me.
Would you like any drink? Um, no, no, thank you. You go ahead and have one, though. It must be rather cold standing out there. Yes, it is. I don't really drink. At least I didn't until... Well, anyway. I suppose most of the chaps are pretty ginned up before they come up here, aren't they? Yes, I suppose they are. Look, I'm... I'm afraid I don't know what to say. I... Well, the chaps were right. They said I wouldn't get away with it. I don't understand. Well, you're not what I expected. You're nice and... sort of... Well, you could almost be like me. You know, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this. Sorry, have I said something? Oh, please don't worry. Here. Take this. I don't really want to. Well, the only reason I came here this evening was because my girlfriend left me last weekend. I had a few drinks, and the chaps at the office said the best cure was to pick up a... Sorry, I... I didn't mean... I didn't mean that you... Look, I'll go, shall I? You paid for something. Why don't you stay and get it? No, I... I wanted the real thing. And you're not the real thing, are you? Good night. Thanks. Jim? Now then, now then, what's going on here? Oh, it's all right. It's all right. I don't want to get mixed up in this argument. Sir. Back. If they come here, you haven't seen me, okay? But don't. Okay. That's a baby. You go and fetch another policeman for me, please, sir. All right. There's been a fight. This gentleman got hurt. Know anything about it? I was just going out. How long have you been in? Not very long. Hmm? Oh, it's been a rough house. You hang on here. I'll go and get on the phone. Right. Now then, come along. Move along then. Millie, what is this? Well, you don't expect me to stay out there, do you? The police are so thick there isn't a man for miles. Mm. Police? Well, what did you expect after a job like that? Give it to me in English, Millie. What is all this about? That fella, Tony, gave him a beauty treatment, didn't you know? Okay. Well, at least we can wait up on Something, get me Tony. Oh. Oh. Now, Angela, before you start, I've been checking out... You're my brother, Tony. You could actually have my right arm while you do these things. Look, it's easy for you to talk sitting in here. I told you before, no violence. Sure, you're my brother. But also, you work for me. So when I give an order, it don't matter who you are. You do it, or you get out. Yeah, okay. But now you listen to me, Angelo. This guy's been talking to the girls, asking questions. Lots of questions. He's either from the police or he works for Salvi. But anyway, he's dangerous. But I said no violence, Tony. No, you said don't beat up Salvi. So you do worse than that. You go and beat up this other guy. You know what's gonna happen if that girl talks to the police? She won't talk. How do you know that? She's new, ain't she? And when they're new, they scare easy. That means we gotta lie low and Salvi's got the business right on a plate. Okay, Tony. I gotta stand by you. We'll see this thing through. 
for you hear me now. You cross me again, I'm brother or no brother, I'll cut your throat. No, it was, it was too dark. I can't be sure. Hmm. Well, I warned you, didn't I? What does your wife think about this? I told her I'd been hit by a taxi. Mm, I'd have said a bus myself. It sounded stupid. Well, we'll see what the girl has to say in court this morning. I wish I had a chance to talk to her. You say she's a new recruit? As far as I know. What time is she appearing? About 11.30, sir. Well, if there's nothing more, I'll be getting along. I'd leave it alone if I were you, Mr. Buxton. Would you? Thanks. I've got the report here about Selvi. Anything in it? Looks as if he's stepping in on the Gianni territory, right? Better pass the word on to the super. Advise him to have his nice men work in Paris for a bit. Excuse me, my name's Lloyd Buxton. Are you from Tony? No, I was in court just now. I'd like to talk to you. What do you want? Are you in No, I'm not. Look, the time's rather against us. There's a cafe up the road if you could. Uh, two teas, please. Two teas, please. Your first time, wasn't it? What? Wasn't much fun. Look, what do you want? There's nothing I can tell you. Isn't there? Marissa, your parents know what you're doing? My parents? My father is dead. Your mother, then? No. Thanks. That was your first conviction. I wouldn't make a habit of it. Please. I don't want to talk about it. Well, if you don't want to help yourself, perhaps you'd help me. I want to find out how a, a decent girl like you from an apparently normal background could get tangled up in this business. Egg and chips twice, please, Mary. How did it start? Is it a man? What are the Giannis? Johnny's? I don't understand. Tell me, how do they go about it? Threats? Blackmail? No, nothing like that. I'm not what you are thinking. I had to do it. I had to help Tony. To save him. Tony. That was him. Tony Gianni. That is not his name? Yes, it is, Marissa. Tony Gianni, brother of Angelo Gianni. <laughs> So he mentioned Brother Angelo. What about Brother Benny? The three of them, they're in business together. Business? What do you mean? You heard what was said in court, didn't you? The Gianni brothers' activities are notorious. So are the Gianni girls. But surely you knew. I am not Tony, he's not. Oh, yes, he is. He's Tony Gianni. And you're one of the Gianni girls. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll be there. Right. Salvi says he'll talk. I mean, half an hour at his place. Good. We get this thing settled once and for all. Well, oh, the usual two pounds. Did she talk? No, oh, she just acted stupid. I think she is stupid. All right, all right, all right. Come on, let's go and see Salvi. You too, Tony. And remember, everything nice and quiet. I don't want no violence. Come on. Yeah, I don't think this will do you good. Thank you, Trixie. And if you're really set on going, you'd better make it snappy. If he comes in, you won't get away with it. I'm nearly ready. Ah, there's nothing like a cuppa, is there? Trixie, have you been doing this for a long time? <laughs> Most of my life. Of course, I started on the street, same as you. And then I worked in Paris, in a house there. After that, I sort of hit the in-between stage, you know. Too old for your job, too young for this. Why did you ever start? Well, <laughs> I suppose I was born to it, as you might say. My ma was a drunk, and my father was... Well, he might have been anybody, as so far as I could tell. When I was about 17, ma thought it was about time I started earning, so... Trixie. Now, I've... Come to terms, really. 
A sense of humor helps, of course. You better get that thing fixed up. The way this thing is building, we're gonna need you healthy. Get me Benny. Who was it that that fellow you slashed? Billy Sakaki. We're gonna need alibis. If he dies, life ain't gonna be worth living around here. Hello, Benny. Listen, we're at Trixie's now. Big trouble. Salve double crossness. Yeah, you jump with us on the way out. What? Oh, yeah, one of Salve's boys, Billy. Uh, Billy Sacchetti. Sacchetti. And Tony got a cut. What? Tony, what happened? Oh, nothing. It's just a scratch. That's all. I have to worry Let about. me see. Now, listen to me carefully. This doesn't make any difference to me. The girls have got to go out just the same. You got the boys in the office? Well, get on there. I'll be there in 15 minutes. How's it feel? I'll live. She's your alibi. You stay with her the rest of the night. And you'll remember, he was here since 6 o'clock. Who's the kitty? I'll tell you later. Get your story and get it perfect. And whatever happens, she saw it happen. Did I? Well, let's fix this before I plead today. I was just... Leaving? Come on, fix this. Tony, I know who you are now. What your business is. What I am. What you've made me. A Johnny girl. <laughs> yeah, you're a Johnny girl. This is what you always meant to happen. Make me love you and then... Well, I did. I hope you're satisfied. Uh, sure, I'm satisfied. If you have any sense, you will be too. You're a Gianni girl now, and you're gonna go on being a Gianni girl as long as I want you to. You understand? Tony, what happens if that man dies? They bury him. Suppose the police find out it was you. Then they bury me. Yeah, but they're not gonna find out. None of the boys will talk. We sort this thing out between ourselves. Trouble. Any kind of trouble, we take care of ourselves. Remember that. That's him. Stay with him, then. Yes? I want to know immediately he can talk. So get us out of danger. It knocks any case we might have had right on the head. None of them talk for less than a murder charge. By the way, we've just picked up what's left of one of Gianni's minders. He's in a pretty bad state. Get me Sam Salvi and Angelo Gianni. I want them brought in, whatever they are. Thanks, just downstairs. What? Franks is downstairs. He's taking you to Kingcombe. All right, I'll be down. Hello, Angelo. Sam is good to see you. Long time no see. How's business these days? Terrible. If things don't get better soon, I'll have to go out and get a job. All right, you two comedians. Saget is going to live. So I suppose nobody will talk and the fight never happened. But you listen to this. I know what's brewing. 
I'm going to stop it before it starts. If so much as one earlobe gets chived on my manor in the next month, I'll not rest till I put you both out of business. That's from the heart. What's the matter with you, Inspector? I don't know anything about anything. We're not responsible for every hophead who gets the feeling, you know, Inspector. That's tough luck on you both. Keep out of each other's way, that's what I'm telling you. Or so help me, I'll put on such a pressure that ten years hard will seem like a rest cure after it. Place is over there with the other girls. Oh, I love the bracelet, dear. Is that present? Oh, yes, present. Oh, Gold, is it? Proper charge, Joe. Oh, sorry, dear. Oh, there'll be no trouble with this one. She's a pushover. Oh, that's nice. I used to have four like that, you know, stretched from here up to here. She came in early. She wouldn't talk to me. She seems upset about something. Yeah, I'll give her upset. No, no, I wouldn't. Not tonight. Not if I was you. What is it? Do you know? Well, no woman in her right mind could understand it, but the girl happens to be in love with you. Yeah. Yeah, love. Yeah. So if you do go into her, just try to be nice, eh? Well, um, I don't feel nice. Tell her I'll look by in the morning. Tony. Aren't you going to say hello? Oh, yeah. Hello. You haven't spent a night here all week. Oh, really? Well, I've been busy. So I heard. Tony, I must talk to you. Please. Yeah. I done? You don't come here anymore. You, you look at me as, as if I'm a stranger. What do you want me to say? That every time I see you, my heart stands still? That you're the only girl in the world? <laughs> oh, up. But all this was for nothing? <laughs> Not exactly for nothing, baby. Why'd you do that? You tell me. But because I loved you. Love me? No, my money and the things I can give you. Look, let me tell you something. Yeah, let me tell you something about the frail sex. And believe me, this is an animal I've come to know. You use the word love like a passport to get you where you want to go. And when you get there and you find you don't like it, what do you do? You turn around and you tear some poor Tom to shreds. Because for every woman, there's got to be a whipping boy. Yeah. Oh, look. Look, I've had girls ten times as gone as you and they still wouldn't do it. No, because when they had to choose between what they believed in and what they wanted, they gave up what they wanted. But you, oh, the minute you walked into that club and saw what it was, you made a decision. You wanted to see life, and you didn't care how you did it. So if you blame anyone, Miss Innocence, blame your own hypocritical female dreams. You know it's not true. You know it's not true. <laughs> What's your name? Henry Otis Smithers. You married? I'm a widower. You sure of that? Well, I should be. I hope to bury it. Cheers. You get the rest after the ceremony. Get rid of 
Okay. What's going on? Uh, nothing for you to lose your sleep over. You know, a few mornings in bed wouldn't do you any harm. Your skin's beginning to look like blotting paper. What's the matter with you? I said, what's the matter with you? Why don't you go back and finish your wedding arrangements? That's all over by the screaming. What's wrong? Look, don't you have everything you want? Well, take this for her. You know, most women would give their eyes for this. What did you give that was so precious? What's the matter with her? She's a woman. That's what's the matter with her. Lucky for you, she is in your line of business. You know, you'll never get away with it, ducks. We'll see about that. No girl walks out on them, honey. You don't know the kind of men you're dealing with. You're not going to stop me, Trixie. But where will you go? I'll find somewhere. Look, you better go to Doris Newman. You know, the golden bucket. She'll put you up. I can look after myself. Yes, maybe, but you got to eat, honey. But you got to eat. How are you going to live? Don't you know? I've got a profession now. Please don't go out again tonight. There are lots of other places. Why look for trouble? Come on. What do you say we go to the pictures? I can easily get the night off from the club. Thank you, Doris. Oh, there. I never stand the hours. And what about the feet? <laughs> <laughs> she comes. Uh. Have I got the plague or something? Look, kid, don't be crazy. They'll find you here, they'll kill you. But well, don't blame us. If they saw us talking to you, we'd catch it too. Look, take a bit of advice, get out of the racket. Wherever you go, they'll find you if you don't. Thank you. You on the street? Large as life. So what are you going to do? I already told you. Get rid of her. Fix something on her. Just get her out of my hair. Yeah. I don't like this. I've got nothing against her. You're going to have something against me in a minute if you don't keep your mouth shut. Have it help both of you if you let me down. All right, Edna. You go on down, we'll follow. All right. Tonight? Just out? Yes. Go on. Go on. Oh, it's you. 
And you, what's the matter with your shoulder? She did it. She had a knife. It's a lie. I only pushed her when she hit me. Oh, did she? Look, officer, there's a knife on the step. I tell you, I never had a knife. All right, save it for the sergeant. Come on now, come on. Come on. Remember me? You know why I'm here. I said no once, I'll say it again. Even after what happened? Especially after what happened. I don't like the Johnnies, mister. But I don't like the police any better. They only reminded you. She attacked me. I never had a knife. I know it as well as you do. We can remind isn't all that bad? Well, you try sometime. Anyway, I'm nothing to do with the police. Look, with the information I've got, I could smash the Giannis. I've got everything I need, except the testimony of a girl who actually worked for them and paid them money. I grieve for you. this? What? Yeah, well, yeah, thanks. You only gave her six months. Did she talk? No, she didn't talk. Armed assault in only six months? What's this country actually coming to? And you go out, kid. Two days' time. I've got a message for you from Doris. She says, get out of the smoke quick. If you don't, Angela's planning something real nasty for you. Thank you. Nicely, or Why have you brought me here? For breakfast. What do you think? Oh, we'll just wait and see what happens. Oh, hello, darling. This is Marissa Cooper. This is my wife. Hello, Marissa. Hello. What's the mystery about? Oh, you'll see. And I don't think you'll like what you see. Doris! You know why 
why they did it? Because she let you stay in her flat after you'd walked out on Tony. What do you want to know? She's beautiful. No, just young. Finished? Yes. What happens next? Well, as they say, I've got the facts. It's up to Kingdom to find the body. Gianni. We've lived with that name quite long enough. Well, what are we going to do now? Huh? See, without the girl, there wouldn't be much of a case. No. That copper goes everywhere with her. She's never alone a second. That's just where you're wrong. No one was ever more alone than that girl is right now. This is Marisa. Is Tony there? Hold on. It's the girl. It's Marisa. Tony. Tony, go on. Well, go on. All right. You know what to say. Marisa, what's this? You at Buxton's? Yes, but I'm leaving. I just wanted to say goodbye to you, Tony. Leaving? Where are you going? I don't know, Tony. I just can't go on anymore. Oh. Now, wait a minute, baby. You mean you're not going to give evidence against me? I can't do that. I loved you. Well, that's fine. Say, listen. No, Tony, please, don't. No, you listen. Now you get over to Trixie's. You stay there until the case is over. It's no good, Tony. Look, honey, I need you. I know I treated you badly, and maybe I deserve to go to jail. But you stick by me this time, and I swear I'll make it up to you. They can't convict me without your evidence. When the case is over, well, we'll go away. And start all over again. The south of France, or, or Italy, maybe. Yeah, how would you like to go back to Italy, huh? Oh, I'll get a job, a real job. Oh, honey, I love you. You're not gonna let me down, are you? You've said all this before, Tony. I had enough lies. You don't love me. You never did. You used me. I know I behaved foolishly. But what I did, I did it because I loved you. Because I would have done anything for you, Tony. But it means nothing to you. Nothing. Look, I swear. Now you get in a cab and get over to Trixie's. No, Tony. Listen, Gianni. Tomorrow morning, Marissa will be in court. Tomorrow night, you'll be in jail. Goodbye. Uh, Buxton. Did you phone him? You've got to let me go. I can't do this to him. And what did he tell you to do? Go back and wait for him at Trixie's, I suppose. And then what? A new life together? Start again, go abroad, love at a cottage with roses round the door? And you believed him. Does it matter? Of course it matters. A man like Gianni can't change. Within a week, he'd have you back on the streets.
you won't escape again. I'll never escape. You'll be safe here. By tomorrow, it'll all be over. They'll be too busy worrying about their own skins to bother about you. Now, listen, Marissa. You do believe I'm your friend, don't you? I suppose so. And why not trust me? That's what he said. What does it matter who I trust? Even if I never see any of them, what sort of fluff is there for me? My mother will know what I've been. Everyone will know. I can't stay in London. I can't go home. Where can I go? You leave it to me. I'll see that you get a chance to start again. I promise you. How can you, Brian? I said you'll have to trust me! You better get to bed now. You've got to be in court at 10 in the morning. It doesn't seem right that I should hurt him. It's his turn to be hurt. Look, Marissa, there have been others before you, and there'll be others to follow. We've got a chance to break the chain. But there's only one way we can do that. Put Tony Gianni behind bars. You know that's true. I did love him, you know. I really did. Of course you did. This is Marissa Cooper. She's prosecution witness in the Gianni case. I'll be waiting. 